Aerodynamics is an important component in the design of vehicles. The shape of the vehicle helps the engine puncture through the air instead of pushing it aside. But then, what do the air wings or spoilers do? If anything, they increase the drag force making the engine more inefficient, right? Well, yes, but there is something else. To understand the effects of an air wing, let's first understand the physics of banking a curve. When the car travels in a straight line, the traction force between the road and the tires points in the same direction as the direction of travel. However, when the wheels are turned, there is an additional component generated, which points perpendicular to the direction of travel. This component is the centripetal force, FC in this case, which is needed for circular motion. If FC is not high enough, meaning the traction force between the tires and the road is less than m times v squared over r, then the car would slide off the road in an attempt to keep moving in a straight line, as noted in Newton's first law. From the circular motion formula, we can notice that if we increase the velocity of the car, we would have to increase the radius of the curve as well to keep the car from sliding off, which explains why the curves on highways are much milder with large radii compared to the urban roads. However, in a real-world scenario, we don't really have control over these parameters. Unless we eject a passenger mid-drive, the mass of the car is pretty much fixed, and the same applies for the radius of the curve, so we are essentially left with only two parameters to play with, either decrease the velocity or increase the traction. The easiest way to make the curve safely would be to reduce the travel speed. A reduction in the speed would decrease the needed centripetal force, which would decrease the chances of sliding off the road. But that defeats the purpose, right? The objective is to travel faster and safer. So, as we already saw, the traction between the tires and the road provides the centripetal force needed for the car to stay on the road. As long as this friction force is larger than the needed centripetal force, then we don't have a problem. However, when we go faster, we need more centripetal force to stay on the road, and from the friction equation, it seems that the only thing we can increase is the normal force, since we don't have much control over the friction coefficient. To increase this limit, the wheels need to be pushed harder against the road. Adding mass can do this, but heavier vehicles require a more powerful engine and are harder to control. So we need some virtual weight that will allow the car to have more traction without the negative effects of actually adding the extra mass. This is where the wing comes into play. A wing can generate downforce solely through clever aerodynamics. The engine will have to work only slightly harder to overcome the added drag from the wing, which is not a problem for racing cars since fuel economy is not really an issue. But the downforce is where the real benefit lies. The tire's friction is proportional to the normal force. Adding aerodynamic downforce to the weight component increases the adhesion to the road. The larger normal force avoids wheel slipping or sliding off the road and allows for maximum possible acceleration. But how much difference does the wing actually make? The answer is not simple. It's highly dependent on parameters such as the mass of the vehicle, the friction coefficient, radius and super elevation of the curve, but also the shape of the wing and angle of attack and so on. But for regular non-racing cars, the wing doesn't make a huge difference. We will simulate a typical non-racing vehicle, in this case Opel Astra. The red vector represents the direction and magnitude of the centripetal force and the green vector is the velocity. If we quickly sum up the forces acting on the car while it's banking a curve, we can solve for the maximum allowed velocity as a function of the rest of the parameters. If we enter parameters as specified by the Ministry of Transportation of British Columbia for a 100 km per hour design speed, the minimum radius for a curve is 440 meters with 6% super elevation. Furthermore, the mass of the vehicle can be taken as 1200 kilos and the coefficient of friction at 0.8, which would represent ideal condition. Solving for the maximum safe velocity with a wing, we get 244 kilometers per hour compared to 225 kilometers per hour for a case without a wing. 
However, keep in mind, this analysis is oversimplified and assumes equal weight acting on all wheels and absolutely perfect road conditions. For icy roads, the coefficient of friction can drop as low as 0.1, which would dramatically change the result. But regardless of that, the main point is that installing a wing to a regular non-racing car is somewhat stupid because the effects of it are more drastic for higher speeds and low mass vehicles. One place where the wing plays a huge role is Formula 1. The low mass of the vehicle and high velocities make the effects of aerodynamics very important. Maybe in a future video we'll explore how much difference the aerodynamic component makes on Formula 1 vehicle. If you like this video and you want to see more similar videos, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and see you soon.